Good morning, Exodus. We have another Sunday reflection for you, and I hope it finds you well and wearing masks and staying close to the master. When uh, I was a teenager, my father would often give my brothers and I uh, chores to do, and we uh, were not good at doing chores. We uh, would be given, especially during the summer, we would be given uh, stuff that he would like to see done. Um, and we would mess around and not work focused, not work well, uh, and we would consume many days of our summer um, just goofing around in the place that we were supposed to be working, but getting very little to nothing done. And one summer he had us um, sanding the walls of our basement. He had put up sheetrock and spackled it, and he just wanted us to sand the basement. And uh, that's that's all he asked. And, you know, we could not figure out why this was so important, why he had to have us do this. And uh, we spent the entire summer in the basement, not sanding the basement, messing around, you know, uh, not really doing anything except being in the basement and not working instead of being outside, going places, doing things. And um, toward the very end of the summer, he gave us an ultimatum that if the basement was not sanded by the time he got home, there was going to be uh, very unpleasant consequences. And so we focused in and it took us about uh, two hours for all of us together to sand the walls of the basement. And we realized that we had wasted our entire summer um, not sanding the basement and we could have just had it done in the first day of the summer and moved on and had a summer to ourselves or a summer with more chores but you know more effectively done and more time to do what we wanted to do. And you know at the time I didn't understand why my father wanted us to do this and why it was so important, but it instilled in me the realization that uh, when there are unpleasant things to do, it's just better to get them done and not procrastinate, uh, not put them off. And um, there are many lessons like that that my parents taught me, that my uh, teachers taught me, that my mentors have taught me, uh, that I did not understand at the time why is this important or what is this about or this is stupid this shouldn't be happening and um, I have grown to uh, appreciate the things that people have taught me uh, even if the uh, ways that I learned them were unpleasant or not what I would like and I have grown to respect and love the people who have taught me these things uh, all the more because they knew I would be glad ultimately that I had uh, endured and, and pressed on. And I think that that is uh, a set of circumstances that is most beneficial when we are in relationship with people. When people have us do things that we are not in a positive relationship with, we, uh, we question their motives. We uh, think there's no reason, there's no point. But if we are in relationship with them, uh, we trust them. Our trust grows in them the more we know them. And we can not understand why we have to do things or what this is all about, but trust that ultimately it'll be okay because we, we love these people, they love us, and we can uh, have trust in them. So I, um, I was... Uh, reading the Bible earlier this week. And um, as you know, John 15 is one of, is my favorite chapter in the Bible. And I, I find it so interesting that Jesus uh, waits till he's with his disciples on the very last day before his death, the evening actually of his death, uh, or the beginning of his death, yeah. Um, to start being really blunt about a lot of things that he has talked about and they just haven't got, they haven't understood. Um, 
And so I was curious what Jesus actually talked about right before John 15. And it really uh, struck me because um, he's talking about going back to the Father and uh, they should be glad about this. Um, and then he says this in verse 30. I will not say much more to you, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Um, I think that of all the reasons that Jesus came, and we can list a lot of different reasons why he came, all good reasons, we don't hear too much about this one. Um, that the Prince of Darkness, who was going to move uh, to tempt and prompt Judas, the Jewish leaders, the Roman guard, uh, and officials, the crowd, his own disciples, he comes, having no power over Jesus, but he comes so that the world may learn that Jesus loves the Father and does exactly what the Father tells him to. Um, and I think that that's so interesting that it's important that we know that so that the world may learn that he loves the Father and does exactly what he tells him to. Um, I, I know that we all from time to time struggle with uh, the situations that we find ourselves in, in, in this broken world, in our um, broken relationships, in our families, in our social circles, uh, in our city, state, and country, uh, we, we don't understand why um, God allows the things he allows, why God does the things he does. <coughs> it's okay. Um, and I think that this is very similar to, uh, you know, us learning situations in our, in our childhood and in our teens that our parents teach us like I've already touched on. Um, we may not appreciate the pain of uh, having braces, but we have been explained that the goal is to have straight teeth, to uh, have teeth that function better and are healthier and look nicer. Uh, we don't understand. Uh, we understand, you know, the importance of vaccinations and, you know, different medical procedures that our parents not only allow but put us take us to and put us through are ultimately for our benefit and our good and so I think that situations like that and just our understanding of science uh, and cause and effect um, lead us to a place where if I can understand what's going to happen then I'm okay with that um, but I need to know the details. I need to know how is this going to benefit me? Why would I want to endure this? And I think that in a lot of ways that serves us well. That's a gift from God that we have a reasonable mind and we can understand that if I stick a fork in an outlet, that's going to be bad, cause and effect. If I treat people poorly, they're going to respond to me in a bad way. Um, but I also think that we... Um, buy into the lie uh, of Satan back in the garden that we can know good from evil, that um, this cause and effect goes over into all realms, including spiritual realms, and that we ought to be able to be like God and understand everything that he's doing. Otherwise, we don't have to buy into it. And I think that that does not benefit us. I think that... Um, this is when our relationship comes in. If we have a loving, trusting relationship with God, we will know that ultimately he has our best interests in mind when he moves in our lives or does not move in our lives the way we think he should. Um, I... <clears throat> I want to share another verse with you. <clears throat> this is from John 9, and uh, this is the, the time that Jesus heals a man born blind. 
And this is starting in verse 1, chapter 9. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? <clears throat> Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Um, I, I think that this is kind of a, kind of a challenging concept here because, <clears throat> you know, we know that God knits us together in our mother's womb. Scripture tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And yet God made this man blind from birth. He made him blind and gave the man no explanation his entire life until he encountered Jesus. And then he knew. Ultimately, this was for God's glory. Um, and I think that we can put everything in our life that we don't like up to the world's broken and it's just a bad, bad, bad world, you know. Otherwise, God would have me problem-free and everything would be great. And yet, God not only allows bad things in our lives, bad by our understanding of bad, um, just like a toddler would consider a shot in their thigh bad, uh, even though it's a vaccination for their good, uh, he allows those things and even orchestrates those things sometimes for our good and for his glory. And um, that can be challenging. Uh, we, we ask questions like, I wonder how a good God can allow such suffering in the world. And the concept that God would actually have a man born blind, have us born with a specific brokenness in our life, whatever that might be. Uh, can be really unsettling if we don't have a relationship with the Father. If we don't have a relationship with God and know that he made me this way because he has a plan for this, because he is going to use this. Uh, the man was healed and he, uh, he became a follower of Jesus. He was so overjoyed and I uh, suspect that if somebody had come to him and said, would you rather have not been born blind? Uh, he would say, no, I, I am so glad that this was the way God moved in my life. And um, I think that's be he would have said that. I truly do because he had a relationship with God at that point. He had a relationship with Jesus and knew he was the one that had healed him and moved so powerfully. Um, <clears throat> And I think that Jesus gives us a really great example in his loving the Father and doing exactly what he says, even when the circumstances were bad, bad, super bad. God did not allow the cross. God did not allow Christ's crucifixion. He orchestrated it. It was a plan made from the foundation of the world. From the very beginning, this is what God planned. So... I know that we struggle with suffering, and we are not alone. Uh, a lot of the writers of the Bible struggled with suffering. Uh, you know, a lot of the prophets <laughs> struggled with suffering, uh, struggled with injustice and why God would allow it. And um, ultimately landed on the same spot, which is, I will trust him. I will love him and do what he tells me and trust that he is in control and this will ultimately be for good. And so I think that it can be impossible to see good come out of bad without a relationship with our Lord. I think that to... Um, to think that everything's just going to work out for the good is very, uh, very naive, very Pollyannish, apart from knowing the Father, apart from knowing that God is working in all things. Um, 
and this is not like a cartoon where everything's going to be swell. It's uh, the real world, and it's uh, not everything is going to be swell, but ultimately everything will be redeemed because God is moving in us if we allow him to. Um, so I, I would encourage you to follow the example of Christ. <laughs> That's what we've been told our whole lives. Be like Jesus, right? Follow the example of Christ and love God and do exactly what he tells you. Not because he wants mindless minions, but because he is a loving father who knows how this ends, who is in control of how this ends and wants to work in and through the good and the bad in our lives for his glory and his purposes and our joy. <laughs>